Uh, hello, my name is Mark Peace uh, and I work in the Faculty of Education. The, the Burley Big Bang was a little bit of an experiment with academic induction um, as we moved into the Burley building. Um, so the Faculties of Education and Health had moved from our outposts at Gaskell and Didsbury um, and we wanted to use it as an opportunity just to do something a little bit different. So really the, the sentiment that underpinned uh, the Burley Big Bang was that we wanted to land at Burley with uh, a little bit of buzz and a little bit of energy. So one of the things that had always frustrated me at Didsbury was Welcome Week tended to be a little bit energyless. So the students would turn up, they'd register, they'd, they'd pick their card up and then they'd disappear off home. Um, so we wanted just to launch Burley with a slightly different culture that was a bit more biz buzzy and a little bit more exciting. Um, we wanted to base it around principles of collaboration. So we wanted to get the two faculties working together in a different way, uh, but also our students, we wanted them mixing and interacting um, in a way that really they've never done in the past. And we wanted to base it around uh, the importance of enrichment. So we didn't replace program inductions. They were really important for doing the business of getting the students going. Uh, but we wanted something broader and, and, and richer surrounding that experience just to make it a bit more exciting for students. Where we ended up was uh, an approach which was based around really short pop-up events. So there would be 20 minute things happening all over the Burley building on all sorts of different topics, from parachute games out in the courtyard um, through to stuff on academic reading, stuff from the library about finding texts, uh, and opportunities just to mess with the building. So we had pop-ups um, around um, using the kiln, so we had a pottery pop-up. Um, a space for the psychology students to showcase the experiments that they were developing. Uh, so a real range of things going on. To tie it all together, we developed uh, an app um, which basically worked like a, an event booking app. So it had a, everything that was running on each of the days um, and the students would be able to log in um, and sign themselves up for particular events. So what that let us do is have chaos going on. Uh, so we had things going on in all of the different spaces all over the place and the thing that held it all together was this app which was curating the number of students that we had at any given a a activity um, and also directed them where they were going and, and where they'd find the people. What we ended up with was 300 pop-ups running over five days which was um, a, a massive success really. It was nowhere near what I expected and it was really testament to the willingness of staff just to give up 20 minute chunks of time to do something nice with students. And there was a real appetite um, among staff just to have a go at something different. Things that we've learned on the back of the, the, the Big Bang, because I'm, I'm a big fan of just doing stuff. Um, it wasn't really set up as an evaluative project where we were going we to develop metrics and measure. It was about doing something that was completely out of what we would normally do and seeing what learning fell out of it. Overwhelmingly, the response from students who engaged was really, really positive. They were very aware of um, the benefits of being able to construct your own induction programme. So, so there was lots of sentiment, which was we really liked that we decided what the things that fill, uh, filled our days up were. When we looked at what the pop-ups were that were successful, they tended to revolve around mastering a skill or developing a competence. So those were the ones that filled up really, really quickly. There were also things that were tied to other human beings. So where it was an academic doing something that was about their passion, students were really keen to get involved and go and find out a little bit about that. And similarly, um, they were really up for things that were involving fellow students. So stuff that was run by students that were really good. And one of the really interesting things was that um, they were really up for things that weren't related to their degree. They liked the opportunity uh, at having a nosy at other people's stuff. So when you went to the, the pottery workshop, it was full of nurses. Um, and when you went to the, 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 the psychology experiments, it was, the, it was the education students who were really interested in that. So that ability just to get outside of your, uh, your degree parameters was also something they really liked. They were less keen on anything that might expose them. So activities that looked like they would have to perform tended not to be very enthusiastically um, enthusiastically met and partly I think that's because first years who were predominantly engaging are scared um, at that time in their degree. They didn't like things that were too generic 
So they liked a tight focus where they could see what was going to go on. And they were tending to be put off by things that were o overly formally described, whether that's the person running it or the event itself, tended to alienate them a little bit. We found that the, the program buy-in to those events was really important. So programs who integrated the Big Bang into their program induction, their students were really involved. Um, other things like Twitter, so the MMU Twitter account was tweeting about the Big Bang and every time they did that we'd have an upsurge of people using it. But fundamentally it was the human Passover that, that was making the difference. It was someone they knew saying, go and have a go, it's really good. The other thing we noticed was uh, a change in participation as the week went on. So Monday, Tuesday tended to be, to be quite low, and by Thursday and Friday, um, it, the pop-ups had become really, really busy, and of course that, the thing ended uh, at that point. And I think part of what was going on there was that, first of all, Monday, Tuesday was very first year based. And at that point in the week, they are bewildered. Um, and a little bit too scared to try anything. So when I, when I found first years and had chats with them, they were saying, yeah, we, we want to, but we're a bit, we want to see other people doing it first. And because they couldn't have a nosy, because they had to sign up to actually go, that kind of held them back. And there were moments within some of the students' experience, which I find kind of really resonant and powerful. So, so this bit of feedback from, from a student who, who had spent time with Maggie McClure, um, one of our professors, having tea, um, really kind of spoke to me about the benefits of this kind of work and, and most importantly the benefits in terms of connecting human beings up. Okay, next time. Um, if I was running it again, I think what I'd do is I would launch it on the Wednesday and I would run it with a long tail. So instead of doing a really intense one week, we'd start it at the end of Welcome Week and we'd use it as an opportunity to um, we'd use it as an opportunity to launch an enrichment program that ran right the way through the year. Um, I'd do it as a university good. So rather than doing it as something that the Burley building was doing because of its particular thing, um, I'd try and launch it as something that was a bit more collaborative across the university um, and I'd get somebody else to do all the work. Thank you for watching this Good Practice Exchange film. You can find lots more teaching ideas and resources on our website.